This is the Intermediate Apple Keynote Skills tutorial. This is the second video in a series on how to use Apple Keynote. If you have not already watched my beginner's guide to Apple Keynote, I highly recommend that you watch that in addition to this video so that you fully understand how to use it. And in this tutorial, we will look at an assortment of intermediate skills that can really enhance your presentation. In the beginner's guide, I showed you how to add transitions from one slide to the next. And these are just beautiful transitions. I love them. I just tapped escape to get out of the presentation. And I wanted you to see that with this transition that I added between slides, if I ever find that transition to be too fast, I can adjust it to make it so there's a longer duration on that transition. Let's try that. OK, that's way too slow, I think. But you can see the effect that that has of changing the duration of the transition. You can also adjust how and when the transition happens. Right now it's on click. So as soon as the presenter taps spacebar or the right arrow key or hits return on the keyboard or clicks with a left click, that transition happens. You can also make it transition automatically. So I could say after, let's say, 4.5 seconds, the transition will happen. So now if I play the presentation, I don't have to click at all. I don't have to tap spacebar at all. I just wait 4.5 seconds and the transition happens. And so if you don't want to have to have a presenter remote in your hand, or if you don't want to have to go up and tap spacebar, you just want the presentation to run automatically, you can do that. Change it from start transition on click, change that to automatically. In this case though, I'm going to keep it at on click. So that's a little bit more information about transitions from one slide to the next. Now let's look at something related to transitions, and that is animations. So here on the animate panel, because I have nothing selected on this slide, it assumes that I want to change or work with the transition from slide to slide. But in this case, I don't. I would like my students to just see the words El Gato without seeing the picture of the cat. And then when I'm ready, I'll animate the cat, I'll bring the cat in. So to do that, again, I select the cat on the animate panel. There are three different sections to consider. There's a build in animation, there's a build out animation, and then an action animation. The build in section deals with how do we bring the cat into this slide. Build out is how do we take the cat off the slide. And then action is for changing how it moves on a slide or how it's emphasized on a slide. So let's take a quick look at each. So with this cat, I would like to build it in. I would like to add the cat to the slide in a certain way and at a certain time. So I click add an effect. And similar to transitions, I get several ways that I can animate. I could try anvil effect. That doesn't make a lot of sense for a cat. I could try fade and move. There's fade and move, and you can change the direction of the move, the duration, the distance, all of that. I could try blur. That's a nice effect, I think. Fade and scale. There's just so many options here that are interesting and fun. So feel free to explore. And similar to transitions, animations, again, are a strength of Apple Keynote. They really do set Keynote apart from its competitors. I just don't think you can do stuff like this effectively using Google Slides, for example. There's confetti, and there's pop, just all sorts of wonderful animation effects. Flame, that's kind of dramatic. I'm going to go with Comet. Let's try that one. So the cat comes in as if on a comet. And similar to some of those other transitions, I can choose a direction, right to left, left to right. I'm going to keep it left to right. There's also an order option. Right now it's set to position number one because there is only one animation on this slide. All right, let's test it out. I start my presentation, slide one, slide two. There's no cat. And then you tap it, the comet brings in the cat. I love that. I'm gonna tap exit or escape on the keyboard to get out of the presentation. Now, what if I change my mind about El Gato? Maybe I would like to animate that as well. I can easily do that. Again, here on the Animate panel, I can click a Build In Effect, Add an Effect, and it's a good idea to limit the number of animations that you use. 
If you have too many, it can be more of a distraction than anything else. So I'll just use Comet again. But this time, now that I have two animations, you'll notice that I can switch the order. I could make El Gato in the first position and the picture of the cat in the second position. So let's try that. I click play. There's nothing on the screen until I advance the presentation. Now it says El Gato. I advance again. Shows the cat. That's pretty much exactly what I want. You can customize this even more if you want. You can click on build order and it pops up with a bunch of different selections here. For example, the picture of the cat, if I click on that, I could change it. Instead of changing when clicked or when the presentation is advanced, I could do it with build one or after build one. So let's try those really quickly. If I preview that, you'll see they come in basically simultaneously. Or I could say after build one, so build one comes, and then without me advancing the presentation at all, the picture of the cat appears. And you can also do both of those with adding a delay as well, so that it's not exactly at the same time, and not immediately after, but with a little bit of a delay. So this really helps with timing the presentation experience for your audience. And that's especially important if you want to add music and sync the images and the pictures with the music. I'm going to switch back to on click. So those are some intermediate keynote skills that deal with animation and also we talked a little bit about transitions. Another intermediate skill that I'd like you to know is how to add shapes and how you can use those shapes in keynote. So here at the top of the screen where I typically go to add images, I can also go to add shapes. You can see there's arrows, these are very useful. There are your basic shapes here. And then if you keep browsing down, it switches to objects, animals, nature, and so forth. So you can click those or you can click and drag and it browses through some basic shapes and also some less common shapes. I'm just going to go here with this rectangle. I'll click and drag and I want to put this over the top of the words El Gato. That's not really what I want though. I would like it to be in the background. So to do that, all I have to do is right click and choose send to back. There are other ways to do this too. You can go to the format panel, choose a range, send it backward. So that's another way to do it. But I typically just right click, send to back. And some people really like that effect. It can be a nice one to have a shape in the background behind text to make it stand out a little better. Now if you right click on a shape, there is an option that you can choose to make it editable. Now it's already editable a little bit, right? I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, I can send it to the back. But by right clicking and making it editable, you'll notice that the handles changed a little bit. And if you click here on this little handle on the side in the center, look what you can do. You can adjust the sides, the end, the beginning of this shape. You can also change the corners as well. I'm gonna undo that. If you double click on that little handle, it changes the style from curved to more jagged. You can see that here. So try that out. That's an intermediate skill that should come in handy to be able to add a shape, then right click on it, make it editable, and then adjust some of the points that you see in the shape. This one has lots of editable handles. I'm gonna undo this new shape to get rid of it. The next intermediate skill that you should know is how to fix images like this one. A lot of times when you add an image to Keynote, it's going to have a rectangle in the background or colors on it that you don't want. And there's a pretty easy and really powerful tool built into Keynote that helps you solve this problem. All you have to do is click on your image, make sure that you're on the format panel in the image section, and just click Instant Alpha. Then put your mouse on the image and pick the color that you want to make disappear. So white. And look how beautifully that worked. Now I can click done and the elephant now stands out and really pops just like these other animals do. Now sometimes it's not quite so simple. Notice what it says. If it doesn't work beautifully the first time, try what it says here. Drag to make similar colors transparent. So I could drag to select some of these other colors. In this case, it, it doesn't show it very well, but basically it will erase more of the colors. So try that if it doesn't work simply by clicking on one color. I'm going to reset it back. 
and just get rid of the color white. The next intermediate keynote skill that you should know about is how to copy and paste a text style. So for example, this title here, I can go in and choose the text section here of the format panel, and I can make it italicized. I'm going to change the font to something a little different, maybe this one here, and I could change other aspects as well of the text. So now that I've done that, what if I want to copy that to the other text on this slide and maybe to other slides as well? There's a keyboard shortcut you can use. With the text selected, just hold the Option key, hold the Command key, and tap C. Command C usually does a copy, and in this case, Option Command C copies not the text, but the style. Now I'll click on El Elefante, and I'll hold Option Command and tap V, and it just copy pasted all of the text style aspects of this and pasted it here on top of this. And then of course I could switch to another slide and do the same. Let's move on to our next skill, and that is linking. You can right click on just about anything, text or images, and add link. And this link that I'm adding to the zebra in this case, it's gonna link to another slide in my presentation. So I want it to link to the first slide, or I could make it go to the last slide, or to a specific slide, slide number three. But I think I'll stick with first slide, and then I'll click go to slide. So let's test it out. I begin my presentation, I click on the zebra, and it takes me back to the first slide. I'll escape out of there. Now in addition to right-clicking and adding links that go to a different slide, you can also have it go to a web page. So I could type in the address of the website I'd like that to go to, and now when the presentation is played, if you click, it will open up a browser and go to the web page. The next intermediate skill is one that you'll use when you're actually presenting. Let's say you're presenting on this topic, and at this point, you want to go to the internet to show some example or to practice this skill, and then you want to come back into your keynote. All you have to do is tap the H key on the keyboard, and that hides keynote. It takes you to your desktop or whatever is there. In my case, it's just the internet on google.com. So now I can take my students wherever I want to take them, and then I just hold Command on the keyboard and tap Tab, and it takes me back into Keynote. So that's a nice intermediate tip to help you when presenting to a group. Next up, let's look at another intermediate tip, and that is how to change up the toolbar. The toolbar has some great tools and options here for us, but if you wish it had something else, look what you can do. Right-click on a blank part of the toolbar, and choose Customize Toolbar. This brings up many, many different options. For example, Record. I would like to add a Record option to the toolbar. So there it is. What about Copy Style? I showed you a keyboard shortcut for Copy Style, but I could also just put some buttons on the toolbar for Copy Style and Paste Style. Now if you change your mind, you can always drag them back, and they disappear off the toolbar. I'm gonna leave Record there. I click Done and I have now altered the toolbar in Keynote, and this is just for me on this computer. Great, I'm ready to save this presentation, and at this point, my last intermediate Keynote skill that I'd like to show you is how to save your Keynote as a PowerPoint presentation. Now, why would you ever wanna do that? Let's say you're presenting at a conference and you would like other people to be able to access your presentation later. What if they don't have Keynote on their computers? What if they only have PowerPoint? There's an option here in File, Export To. You can export to PDF or to any of these other options, and one of the options is PowerPoint. So I'm gonna export this as a PowerPoint presentation. I'm not gonna password protect it, but I could. You can change this up if you want to, but typically you just leave it the way it is. Click Next. You decide where to save it. I'm just gonna save it in the same folder I've been saving in. I click Export, and it's taking my keynote and it's making a copy of it and turning it into a PowerPoint presentation. So here's the folder I've been saving in. Here's the keynote, and you can see that it's a keynote here at the right. And here is a basically identical presentation, but it's a PowerPoint presentation. When I double click on it, it opens up in PowerPoint. And so here it is in PowerPoint. Now you'll notice some definite differences when playing a presentation that was created in Keynote, but playing it in PowerPoint. It's not quite the same, 
but at least people that don't have Keynote on their computers will be able to watch your presentation on their own computers. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like some recommendations for great presenter remotes, look in the description below. I have some links there. And if you'd like to support my YouTube channel, consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find a link to that in the description below. Mm -hmm.